Welcome to Panels and Borders. I'm Dominic, and this is Comic Back Issue. And this is part two of a six-part series that I'm doing. And in this series, I'll be covering Star Wars, Tales of the Jedi, Dark Lords of the Sith. Now, that is a great cover by Hugh Fleming. He did the cover artwork for all six of these comics. And I have to say that this cover for issue two, this is actually my favorite cover. This is actually the first comic I bought in the series. I didn't get issue one. I missed out on that one, but this is the one that I saw, and this was the cover that really, really grabbed me. Really love this painted cover, the yellow Star Wars logo in the background, and the red blaster bolts through the sky, and uh, the, the soldiers there with the like, kind of like primitive-looking armor on, and just that whole battlefield look. It just looks very, I don't know, Star Warsy, I guess, for lack of a better term. <laughs> and... Uh, so yeah, great painted cover. I saw this in a comic shop, grabbed it, and I was hooked on this six-part series after that. Star Wars Tales of the Jedi, Dark Lords of the Sith, and Tom Veach and Kevin J. Anderson script, Chris Gossett pencils, Jody Ensign inks, uh, Willie Schubert lettering, Pamela Rambo colors, Hugh Fleming cover art, uh, Scott Tice logo and book design, Dan Thorslin and Ryder Wyndham editors so i think the the art team has been switched up a little bit here with jordy ensign on inks and here we have the classic crawl through space quest the quest for the sith so basically all this does is just recap what happened in the last issue of uh, tales of the jedi so in this issue it starts off with this uh, splash page and uh, this is actually uh, my favorite page in this whole comic right here. I just love that design of that ancient starship there buried in, the, in part way into the planet there. It looks just really, really cool. It looks really ancient. I kind of like the, the, the carving. You can see like the carving of some kind of a woman on the side of the ship kind of back towards the engine. And now this is uh, the ship that Freed and Nad uh, came to Andron in. So this is his ancient ship, and they're going. The Jedi are actually using this ship to set up a base, and they have sent uh, Ulick and Nomi to the uh, Empress Tita system, and they have uh, formed a joint Jedi Republic task force to uh, overthrow the coup that's happening there in the uh, Empress Tita system. And then now on the planet, Exar Kun arrives, and he is interested in researching more about Freed and Nad, and he knows that this is a hotbed of archaeological uh, evidence for the Sith, and he wants to look it over. And now these two Jedi Knights here, they have already been pre-warned by their master not to allow him to see any of the uh, archaeological findings or any of the sites on the uh, planet of Onderon. And then their master, Arka, arrives, and uh, he confronts uh, Exar Kun. And uh, right away, Exar Kun tells him that he is a Jedi arche archaeologist and that his master doesn't know that he's involved with the archaeology of the Sith, and he has to look at the uh, finds before they get sh shipped off to the Jedi homeworld. And right off the bat, Master Arka sees right through Exar Kun's bullshit and calls him out on it. And says, uh, you know, your your pursuit of the, the dark side has already uh, led you down a bad path because you've already lied. You lied about your intentions coming here. You're no Jedi archaeologist, and uh, no, you are not going to get access to any of it. So Exar Kun just says, "Well, I'm a Jedi, and I can come and go as I please." So he then flies off. And then we go to the uh, Empress Tita system, where it's a full-blown civil war in that system. Uh, one of the seven planets have not submit to the over th to the new government. Uh, in the last issue, the ruling body was overthrown by their by these basically by their children, the aristocrat children who have been tutor who have who have been ba basically dabbling in dark side magic. And uh, the one girl here, Alima, she can cast use the dark side to cast illusions. So you can make uh, people see things that aren't there, convince them that they're being attacked when they're not. And uh, so this is this planet here that they're battling on. This is actually one planet that's holding out, one of the seven that will not submit to their will. And they have now formed this new 
organization called the Krath, and it was named after an ancient demon. And so they're trying to suppress this last planet here that's holding out. And she's uh, making these warrior staffs look like serpents and stuff like that, using the uh, dark side of the force to cast these illusions. Kind of similar to what happened in uh, The Last Jedi, actually. Uh, that movie that came out where Luke used forced illusions, like he projected himself across space. Kind of a similar concept, I guess. Uh, same as what this girl is doing here. And now the Jedi Republic Task Force arrives, and then the Alima, the dark side user, she uses her illusions of the Force to uh, make the fleet think they're under attack by a ancient space, almost like a space uh, squid or some kind of a weird space creature that was long thought extinct that's attacking their ships. So while they're convinced that their fleet is under attack by these weird space-faring creatures. And then uh, back on uh, Onderon, you know, Exar kind of still investigating uh, the city and he comes across these two acolytes that are preaching about the teachings of Frida Nad in the town square and this mob's kind of pissed off because they do not, they're free of the, you know, the, 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 the politics of Frida Nad and they don't want it returned. So they're, they're ready to invoke mob justice on these two guys. However, Exar Khan, he interferes and he stops them because he wants to get the help of these two acolytes of Frida Nad and he uh, basically uses them to, he wants to use them to show him how, where the location of Frida Nad's tomb is. So then, uh, with the help of the two acolytes, he flies his ship off to the Daxon moon, where Frida Nad's tomb is, and they find Frida Nad's tomb. So there's his tomb, that's actually, I really like that panel, it actually looks really cool, that uh, drawing of the tomb. And this tomb would come up again in the uh, trilogy of books, uh, the Darth Bane trilogy, actually. Darth Bane would also come t back to this tomb here and uh, raid it again for to, en to enhance his own dark side ability. So now Freed and Nad, he basically tries to enter the tomb. He uses his lightsaber to try to cut through, and it doesn't do anything, doesn't leave a mark, because this tomb is constructed of Mandalorian iron. But he was taught by his master that lightsaber can cut through anything, so he actually turns his lightsaber's intensity up to the highest level. That was kind of interesting when I read this because that's something that I don't... It's never been mentioned in the movies as a thing the Jedi can actually do, uh, that lightsabers have different intensity settings. Uh, they... Uh, in, as far as the movies go, they just have the one setting. But in this comic, you can actually turn up the, diff the setting so you can make the lightsaber blade more powerful or less powerful. The only other time I've seen this in the expanded universe was in the novel Vector Prime, where uh, the you know the Solo children are sparring and they got their lightsaber set to like a training setting so they can't actually hurt each other with them. I think that's the only other place I've seen that where you can actually change. And I kind of actually kind of like that idea where you can they can actually change the settings of their lightsabers, kind of like a almost like the phaser in Star Trek, you know, has different settings, setting stun and cut and vaporize and all this kind of thing. So you can do multiple things with it. So Exarchon enters the tomb and he encounters Freedom Nad's force ghost. And uh, Freedom Nad tells him, like, you're a fool for, you know, only terrible things can come to you by uh, pursuing the dark side. But then Freedom Nad tells him, you know, look under my corpse. That's where my master left a map. So he pulls the corpse by of uh, Frida Nad's corpse and he finds like a set of scrolls there. And then Freedom Nad tells him, take the scrolls and I will meet you. And this will show you where you gotta go. So Exar Khan leaves the uh, tomb and outside are two of Freedom Nad's acolytes that let him there. They're both waiting and they see, you know, hey, you're just raiding this tomb. Give us those scrolls. They just call him a Jedi desecrator. And he just offs them both with his lifesaver pretty easily there. And then he, he tapped into his anger once again. So he's starting to use the dark side more and more. You know, in this comic than he did in the last one. He's lied about being a Jedi archaeologist. He's tried to trick his way in there. He's lied to the other Jedi. And now he just taps into the dark side, uses his anger, and just kills these two guys. So he's starting to drift over more and more to the dark side. And then we go back to the battle in the uh, Empress Titan system. 
And uh, so Alima is now casting her illusions again against the Jedi. And the first round of illusions didn't work because Nomi Sunrider has been trained in Jedi battle meditation. So she was a actually able to break the illusions and see through the illusions. And then, and then they see a, a squadron of chaos fighters get launched at their fleet. And uh, as they, and then as, as the fighters are coming, Nomi Sunrider senses that they're an illusion. And then, you know, they're going to start uh, ordering up, you know, a counter fire against the fighters. But uh, Nomi Sunrider tells them, you know, they're just another illusion. They're not fighters and not really there. And then she reaches out with the force towards uh, Alima, who's creating these illusions. And then actually disrupts her ability to cast the illusions. And as you can see, she gets hit by the force. But it was a trick within a trick. The uh, There were illusionary chaos fighters, but not all of them were illusionary. So she was tricked into thinking that it was all an illusion when some of it was an illusion and some of it wasn't. So then these chaos fighters go on suicide runs and slam into the side of the Republic ships. And then here, uh, Ulick is injured by a piece of sh shrapnel, and uh, Nomi Sunrider helps him, pulls the shrapnel out. So in this issue, the Jedi and Republic kind of get uh, whooped a little bit here by the by the Krath in this uh, in this first uh, skirmish that they have. And then we go back to Exar Kun, where he's uh, flying off in his uh, spacecraft there, and. Uh, He's looking over the scrolls that he found from Frieda Nad, and the scrolls are leading him to the final resting place of the Sith, and that is the planet of Korriban. And uh, I just want to talk about the look of uh, Exar Kun's ship there. It's a really interesting design. It's got like one curved wing and one straight out wing, and then those three engines. And it's a really interesting design, and uh, Chris Gossett has a really great way of making the ships in the series look really old and ancient like almost kind of like the designs are old and ancient and impractical looking like that would not be aerodynamic at all that thing but it's star wars and it's fantasy and it looks cool and that's all that matters the science can take a back seat and that's uh this issue and so my thoughts on this issue this issue i think is better than the first one because the first one you had a lot of uh introductions uh, this is this Jedi, this is that Jedi, kind of, you know, who is everyone setting up, who everyone is. This kind of gets the story going more, driving more into the story. And now you have that, uh, you know, Exar Kun is gone on his quest, quest to uh, learn more about the dark side and the Sith. And, uh, you know, Ulick Odrama and uh, Nomi Sunrider, they're off on their mission to try to free the... Uh, Empress Tita system from the Krath with their uh, help from the Republic fleet. So quite a bit of action going on here in this comic, and I think this is a pretty solid issue, and uh, definitely better than the last one. The story really starts to pick up pace here. And uh, re again, I really like the cover for this one. And also, again, uh, Chris Gossett's interior art is really good. And uh, this here is one of my favorite stories from the EU. This comic series. Um, I, now, to be honest, there's a lot I have not read in the EU. I know there's a lot of Star Wars fans out there to just gobble up everything Star Wars. I'm not that level of hardcore, I guess. Like, I buy some odd ends of Star Wars here and there, and I do enjoy the movies and stuff, but I don't just, I'm not a hardcore Star Wars collector. So that's everything I got to say about this issue. And, uh, you know, if give me your thoughts on this issue. You know, leave them in the uh, comment section and if you like this video give me a thumbs up and i will see you at the next one